everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Beyond Kicking and Punching with Sifu Aldecascos and myself. Um, again, just to remind you guys, if you're enjoying all this stuff that Sifu Wild is bringing in, make sure you subscribe to that button. Make sure you hit that notification. And also, when you get a chance, even check out his website, the Cascos Martial Arts, because he has his older videos that are still relevant to today's issues. So again, let me introduce the man, Sifu Al de Cascos. Thank you very much, <laughs> Sifu. It's all yours. All right. Thank you, Sonny. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining in. Listen up. We got... Uh, Really exciting interview today with one of a, a person that I've worked with, I don't know how many, maybe 40 years or 50 years anyway. Now, that said, <laughs> it just gives you an idea that we're really old farts, you know. Um, but we've been around for a while. And anyway, I'd like to just uh, get on and uh, introduce him. He's an actor, director, fight choreographer, a weapon expert. Uh, I mean, you name it. I, that thing is longer than a police rap sheet. So, hey uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get along, uh, get to it, and let him explain and uh, get to himself. So, guys, we'd like to welcome on here. His name is Anthony DeLongas. So, welcome, Anthony, and welcome to our show. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. All right. You know, there's going to be a lot of questions naturally, but we're just going to let it flow. Um, Anthony, you and I worked back in 1979, back in, um, um, where was that? Spain. Yeah, when we were working with Joe Lewis on the project Jaguar Live. I mean, that was the first time I met you and um, we took pictures together. And I guess both of us were just starting to get our careers going. But along the way, from that time to now, there's so much things that has happened. You've, you've, you've had a chance to work with some of the best people in the, the film industry. You know, I see that you work with um, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, Jet Li, and Brandon Frazier, Ron Howard, Tim Burton, uh, David Carradine. I mean, the whole list of people. Um, I'd like you to actually just tell us more about it because one of the questions I have is just that, um, how old were you when you actually get started? And, you know, we were talking just before the show, you were talking about a bit, you, you were actually a, a Canadian, citizen, Canadian citizen, right? Well, um, no, actually, um, my wife is, <laughs> my wife is an Air Force brat. Uh, she was born in Newfoundland on base, so that gives her dual citizenship. Um, mm -hmm. I was born in Los Angeles, um, but my mother remarried. And my stepfather's Canadian, so I grew up in Canada, in London, Ontario, a lovely little town. So I went all the way through public and high school, and then I came back to California. To uh, I graduated from uh, Northridge, Cal State Northridge, and then in the theater department, which uh, you know is a questionable degree. How how useful is that? But uh, it was my heart. <laughs> and uh, then I ended up teaching at UCLA for 19 years in the theater department from '74 to '93. So that's that's. That's part of my travels. You know, I've I've since been uh, I've created I like to think memorable roles, and also very often those roles involved action and weapons in thirteen countries on five continents. So uh, I'm 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 slowly working my way around the world. Whoa, whoa! So what country? Okay, all right. Let's say what countries haven't you been to yet? Haven't I been to? <laughs> Is that is that a, do you think that's a shorter list? Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, actually, <laughs> I I was uh, got a call. Uh, I'd had a hip replaced. Um, you know, I'm 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 over seventy now, and uh, you know, and fortunately, they have the technology to replace parts I wear out. Um, my fencing master, who was my first great teacher, uh, he was Maestro Ralph Faulkner. He was a two-time Olympian and swordmaster to the stars. Um, and I, I remember I, I started work with him. He was about my age when I started working with him. He was my first, you know, martial arts instructor. And I was with him for about 12 years. Uh, he taught up until he was 95. He was still teaching three days a week. Uh, by that point, you know, his legs were giving him some trouble. So he would support himself on a crutch. 
And, you know, his eyes, you know, he had big, uh, big glasses on by that point, but is the minute your blade touched his, <laughs> he had you anytime he wanted you. So, um, it was, uh, I, I, I carry him with me in every day with all the work I do. As it happens, I have a statue in my living room in a, in a place of honor. So that was, uh, that was really great. But um, yeah, that was, that was when I started in my early 20s. And uh, I've been going ever since. I'm, I'm a big believer in um, never stop training, um, never stop trying to get better because both as a martial artist and then also I'm a storyteller. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your art is in those choices. And uh, I have a little mantra. It's, you know, I kind of go, if I'm not getting better, I'm just getting older. And there's only one of those things I can do anything about. But I was about to say, I got a call. Um, uh, come to Hawaii. Uh, it was four weeks after I had my hip replacement, my second one, and uh, you know, do a little bit of fencing, uh, you know, for for the show, and uh, I am. So I did, and uh, it's been about thirteen weeks now. So I've I've been back to teaching. Uh, I'm studying Shinkendo now under uh, Kaisal Toshishiro Obata, and uh, my friend and sensei Matthew Lynch. Um, it's going on about twelve years now, um, and. Uh, Oh, we're back doing all of that. I'm gratefully, you know, after about five weeks, and then I'm back on horses again now too. So um, I'm got a new lease on life, and uh, you know, I work on wearing out some more parts. <laughs> you um, you've been practicing whip for how many years now? Or doing a you know, whip? Uh, over thirty-five. I um. Uh, I created, it's one of the things I'm proudest of. I created my own unique, um, I call it the DeLongis rolling loop system. The whip is the first man-made tool to break the sound barrier. It dates to 3000 BC that we know of in both the Chinese and Egyptian cultures. Uh, every culture that has domesticated animals has had a whip of some form or another. It's an extraordinarily um, effective and efficient tool, you know, to help you um, handle animals that are larger than you are. Uh, you don't hit the animal because, A, it's not necessary. The sound does the work for you. There, there are many sonic booms, um, and that would just be foolish. Um, unfortunately, man being man goes, what an amazing tool. What a great weapon. You know, and then it's gone off into some other, non, you know, baggage with as a, you know, in punishment things. But I always look on it as a tool. And um, a, but I also the traditional manner, most people use a lot of muscle in their shoulder. I call it the yank and crank school. Um, but where you are forcing the whip to work, um, as we all know, as martial artists, um, until you pick it up, everything is an inanimate object. And then be it a blade or a stick or a weapon like a uh, it comes an extension of your will and your skill. You imbue it with life and you give it direction and purpose. Otherwise, you know, you're just a hazard to yourself and everybody else. But I was looking at what other people were doing and I just went, everybody's working too hard because the martial arts ideal, of course, is minimum effort and maximum return. So I discovered that if I aligned the whip with its own structure, um, I didn't have to work as hard. It was much more uh, effective, efficient, and accurate. And what I do is most people push energy uphill so it can come downhill, and that requires a lot of force. I turn my hand over and I create a loop above my hand. Okay, so... Um, the loop starts back here and it rolls and with its own structure, it, it accelerates faster and faster and faster. And then at the very end, it's my system rolls and stabs instead of yanks and slashes. So um, I am more accurate. If you go to my website, which is thelogist.com, you can see me cut the wick out from underneath the candle flame. You can see me, you know, doing a variety of different targets. You can see me working with... Um, uh, one of my students, uh, Kendall Wells, uh, I dressed him up in leather and a motorcycle helmet and gave him weapons and, and very, well, it's kind of devastating because something's coming in and hitting you at 700 miles an hour. 
um, it will cut you like a knife with its velocity. And, but then I also look at it going, the whip, you know, is effective at multiple ranges. Um, you know, if I just, just pick my hand up, I catch the other end of the whip. Now I have a big loop and it's like a double garden hose. So I can still hit you from the same, same eight angles of attack that's true in any bladed system. And then I have this hook or I can stretch the whip out and I can deflect you. Uh, I can also deflect and then envelop you. So now I'm moving into, you know, from medium range into a closer range, basically punching hand range. Um, I, another great teacher in my life is Guru Dan Inosanto. Um, I studied with him for almost a dozen years. So all of the stick work that I learned from him by inverting the whip, because people think, oh, well, I'll, I'll eat that pain you know, from 10 feet away and then come, come rush me. Well, I'm going, <laughs> okay, I'll be here. And by that time I have, I've inverted the whip. So now I have a short whip in my left hand, but I have a baton. So all of the things that I learned from Guru Inosanto um, and from Ron Liu, um, looking forward to doing some more exploration with him because he is so very good at um, submission distance, uh, you know, with his, all his knowledge from Kako Kenyette. Um, but I've got that option. And then of course, if I release a little bit of length, now it's just like a nunchuck. I can do everything with my whip handle that you can do with a nunchuck. A little longer becomes a flail or a rope dart. So it's essentially anything you've studied uh, finds a very, very eloquent voice in the whip. And um, I was able to figure this out because of my Sir Ralph Faulkner and the blade work. And then, um, you know, go to Dan Inosanto with, you know, most European fencers, people think it's linear, and it is, but it also has all eight angles of attack on footwork, ascending, descending, lateral, descending, uh, diagonal, and circle. Um, it's, it's, it's in every art. Subtle, elusive footwork to create superior leverage. So uh, like and you, when I, sorry? Yeah, it looks like you took it to a very higher level. I, well, I, I do. It, it's been a very interesting journey because much of what I started with looking to see how can I find more ways to tell a more interesting character driven story utilizing, um, genu you know, um, authentic combative techniques. So my studies have made me a better storyteller and my, you know, my exploration as a storyteller have made me a better martial artist. I have found the two, um, you know, have, have been a very um, collaborative, uh, you know, way of, of my training. So yeah, it's, uh, I, am, I'm, I am about precision. I am about accuracy. I'm about sensitivity um, to my partner and also my weapon. Um, for example, with a whip, I tell my students, I want to have a supersonic ally, not an adversary. When I'm working my weapons work on horseback, I do all of my weapons work also on horseback. Mm -hmm. And I want an 1100 pound ally. I don't want an adversary, you know, oh, so nice. that attitude has helped me be a lot more open to the possibilities each, you know, each weapon, each tool affords me. And it's, it's, it's been a very rich exploration and I'm not bored yet. You know, well, it looks very interesting. You know, <clears throat> working working with these actors like uh, Henry For uh, Harrison Ford, Michelle Pfeiffer, Jet Li, um, and all those. Who who was the most difficult actor you work with working with uh, the uh, uh, whip? Uh, I, I I don't think I would phrase it that way. Um, okay. You know, when, when you start singling, who is the most difficult? Who is a, who is a pain in the ass? Um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that, but um, uh, I, I I my favorite uh, would be Michelle Pfeiffer, because Michelle realized I was trying to offer her another language, you know, mm -hmm. for another layer in her her performance. And uh, she really took to it. Um, she worked really, really hard. Uh, there are no doubles with the whip in Batman Returns. That's all Michelle. Um, and she got such a strong foundation that we could actually walk on set and turn adversity into opportunity. We'd look and go, okay, here's the problems that the set is posing or the thing or the way they've arranged stuff. We will, all right, we'll work in the vertical and here we'll go to the diagonal. We'll finish in quadrants and that way we you know we won't run into all the crap that's surrounding you on a movie set um the uh 
Was she yeah, it was, it, was, it was really kind of funny because we had we had Kathy Long, who was five time world kickboxing champion, tr tremendously skilled, and she had a couple of inserts for Michelle in in the fight sequences. Um, but Michelle tried to do as much of her own action as she could. We had um, um, Peters. Um, oh gosh, I can't think of her, her first name. Uh, you know, I did gymnastics, but all of the whip stuff was Michelle. None, of, not even Kathy Long got anywhere near Michelle's ability. And I was very, very proud of her. Wow. Okay. And uh, you work also with Jet Li. Was it easy with him? Because he already uh, had training. Anyway, <laughs> and how. <laughs> uh, Jet was one of my favorite dance partners. Okay. Uh, um, I, uh, they, they went all over the world. There's a fellow named Mike Leader, um, you know, very nice man. He's based in Hong Kong. Um, and he's very active in uh, martial arts movies and then um, kind of bridging the gap between uh, Caucasian actors and, you know, Chinese actors and Asian actors. Um, and they, he came up to the ranch and they were looking for somebody who was good with a sword and also good with a whip. And fortunately, my name kept coming up. Um, so they flew me there and, uh, I was really looking forward to, you know, working with the team and seeing how they work. They were about five days behind. Um, so I didn't get to train with the team and see how they did. So basically I met Yen Wu Ping and a jet when I walked on, on set and they immediately started throwing together, you know, the team, some, some action. And as soon as, uh, Yen Wu Ping and, Jet were happy with it. Jet and I would get up, we'd walk it once or twice, then we'd shoot it at speed, and then we would do it all over again. Neither one of us knew the fight choreography because we literally just made it up. But his 30 plus years of training and my 30 plus years of training, he would move, I'd adjust. I would move, he'd adjust. So it, uh, it gave the choreography a very organic feel because it was really in response to the energy that we were giving each other at the time. And um, I really had a really good time with it. Uh, they were, however, they were choreographing my weapon, which was a straight bladed uh, Euro uh, European saber. I'd, I'd suggested a curved one and um, <laughs> uh, anyway, the, we, we went with that, uh, you know, just because it would have been a little different from the gin or the scholar sword that he was working with. Um, but, um, uh, sorry, you're taking me down memory lane because I have some great memories with this, but, um, the first three moves, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, they, the Chinese team thought that European fencing was what they'd seen in the movies, which is. I call it a mi miasma of misinformation. It's usually pretty awful. And the first three moves were three thrusts. He went pokey, pokey, pokey. He actually said that. And I went, oh, God. And I uh, basically, I'm not going to do that with this weapon. You know, I don't want to have a big fight about it. But it's like, so I gave him a lunging attack, followed by a passing forward, followed by a redoublement, it's called. But it's basically, I gave him three lunging attacks, but the way a European would execute them. And... Um, but and I realized very quickly they were having me attack quadrants so that, you know, Jet would be able to do things that he's literally done thousands of times before um, and would tell a great story. Went, That's fine. I understand my purpose here. Um, but uh, sometimes they had me getting there strangely, like it wasn't really the way my weapon would work. Um, a Chinese weapon, perhaps, but not this particular weapon. So I, I at one point I said, I'll give you these, I'll attack to these quadrants. Do you mind if I get there this way instead of this way? And apparently someone on the team said, who's choreographing this, us or the Guaylo? And Wu Ping said, this Guaylo knows what he's doing. And after that, it was, uh, it was very, very pleasurable. Wow. Oh, you've worked a lot with a lot of people. Um, you, know, <laughs> you, gave, you gave us a lot of good history, especially the, the whip. Um, I remember when Ron first, uh, Ron Liu first got involved with it many, many years ago. And then, you know, 20 years later, I see him, it's a, a totally different thing. And then he had told me that you were working here in Hawaii uh, a few weeks back. What, what was the project? Oh, oh can you talk about it? Um, I can a little bit, I think. Uh, it was um, Magnum PI um, and uh, Laura. Uh, uh, assists the um she helps run the stunt department she um assists uh 
uh, Eric, Eric Norris, um, you know, very fine yeah. coordinator. And she called me up and, uh, well, I had trained her. She was one of my uh, Red Sonias, you know, back uh, when I was running the Conan show. And uh, we'd run across each other over the years. Uh, it was very nice. At one point, it was a, um, oh, a Taurus Awards. And, um, you know, I, I sat down with, uh, with my wife, Mary, and she, she came over, you know, and said, you know, we said, hello, we hadn't seen each other in years. And she said, I really wanted to thank you because all of the things that you taught me when you were training me for Conan, I've been using in my stunt career. And that made me feel very good. And I was very pleased about that. Anyway, she called me in December, you know, like three and a half weeks out from my hip replacement. And she says, I, I know this is a silly question, but do you fence? And I went, yeah, for almost 50 years. <laughs> you know, that was, it was my first martial art was competitive saber fencing. And I um, she said, well, can you come over? We've got a little bit of a fencing sequence that we want to do. And I said, yes, I'm, I'm healed enough. I can, you know, I'm, I'm not performing, so I don't have to, you know, do the kind of energy that you use in performance, but uh, I can certainly, you know, work with your team. And she indicated that I would get very little time with the actors, but um, uh, I had, uh, I had a great team of Holland Diaz and um, um Oh, golly. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think of the other names in a minute. Um, apologies on that. But um, I had a lovely team and we trained them and we, we got a nice little sequence uh, that, we, that, that we put together. Um, but it was very funny because I said, well, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know the story. I hadn't seen the script yet because they were still going to see if they could do that. And um, uh, I said, well, I suggest you use Sabre because it is, you can both cut and thrust with it. So it is more dynamic on screen and on film. Uh, if you use epee or foil, uh, they're, they're very weapon specific. It's just a point weapon. And you don't see it much in the movies because most people don't have the skill set to tell an interesting story with that. Uh, so of course they chose foil. <laughs> and I went, Okay, so I came over and I, you know, I put together a piece that took the nature of the weapon and stayed true to it while doing what I thought was, I was kind of doing an homage to the Mark of Zorro, you know, the old Basil Rathbone and um, uh, Tyrone Power film, one of my favorites. And there's a whole section at the end where he can't find the point and finally, you know, dies. And... Um, <laughs> And Holland goes, well, the, you were right. The director didn't understand what it was you were trying to do and they wanted it to look more. So I went, okay. And, you know, as one does, you know, you, you offer something and then they tell you what they don't want and then you, you fix it. So it, 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 it was a fun thing. And I had a, um, uh, a very good time, you know, working with you. And I got to come to Hawaii and I wish, um, uh, you know, Sonny Sisson uh, came out to the, I had one day of rehearsal to, you know, to train people. And Sonny came out, uh, Sonny also worked with me on Masters of the Universe, or not Masters, on um, the Conan Sword Conan. Spectacular. And I hadn't seen him in ages and I wish I'd had more time to play with him. Um, so it was, it, it was very nice. It was kind of a, a reunion for a lot of very dear friends. Yeah. Let me ask you a question now. If someone, I wish interested... we'd gotten to see each other. So the next time right. I come to Hawaii, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, let me ask you this. Yeah, say that a person um, wants to get into stunt work. How? What would be oh. his procedure? Well, um, There, I, you know, I, I wish it was an easy answer. Um, first off, I'd say make sure you really want to do this because it's going to most likely be very difficult. Um, you almost everybody comes in with a specialty uh, where, you know, you have some skills that you have spent usually years, you know, developing so that uh, you can compete on, on a professional level. And, you know, some people come in with fights, you know, weapons. Um, some people, you know, come in with cars, uh, some people come in with water work, some people, you know, um, you know, are specialists in high falls and, you know, burns and things like that. Um, if for a career, um, 
you want to be as well-rounded as possible. So whatever your specialty is, it might get you in the door, but you will be um, more valuable to the coordinator and you are more likely to sustain a career if you keep adding to your skill set. And, um, you know, so you have the more things you can do, the more likely um, you'll be able to become part of a team because they can have you there for your specialization, but they know they can also use you in other places because there's, um, yeah, movies go all over the world these days. And usually they're going, uh, they're trying to go wherever it is they can save a dollar. So the more uh, they only bring in a few people. So basically you want to train yourself so that you are in an upper echelon of knowledge and skills so that, um, you know, you will, you'll be selected to do that. Um, that's just basically train your ass off, be really good at what you do. Don't tell people you can do something you can't do well. Uh, I tell people, don't say you can do something unless you can do it really well under terrible conditions, because they'll almost always be terrible conditions. And you will you will almost always be rushed. The biggest enemy in working in film and television is time. You don't have any. Yeah. You know. Um, oh, wait, so just to finish the thought, it's one of the reasons I train to be able to actually do everything that I do. You know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'm that accurate with the whip. I can take a target out of your hand as we pass at full gallop on horseback. Uh, you know, I can take anything out of your hand. I can not hit you. I can hit something in your hands. I can envelop you from all eight angles. Um, you know, I can keep you and everybody else safe while actually executing, you know, the skill, which makes it easy to film. Then you don't have to do it all in cuts and pieces. And, you know, I, I really hate, to me, action. You have verbal dialogue and you have physical dialogue. And I really hate um, when, you know, they've got really close up, you know, shaky vision, wobble scope, really fast edits. And you, you can't follow the logic of the fight. You can't follow the, um, the jeopardy as it goes back and forth and what does the character do about it. And then you have all those choices. I mean, Jackie Chan is a, uh, is a genius at making it funny too, <laughs> making it look like it's an accident. Um, but if you can't follow the story, then it's very hard to get invested in the character emotionally. And that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, you want to go on the journey with this character. And I find that when, you know, if, if I'm performing or if I'm teaching somebody else, I kind of specialize now in coming in and uh, helping actors and directors and coordinators make the most of their character driven action opportunities um, that the more you can see the actor do this, you know, surround him with a team of other trained people so that he looks good. He gets a credibility that you don't get with a lot of quick cuts and a lot of, you know, things that makes, that makes it look like a video game. I'm, I'm kind of fond. Of, I'm old school. I like real action in real time where you can actually see the skills and it's priceless for the, uh, you know, for, for the credibility of the performer. Well, um, you're in Southern California. Now, if someone was interested in becoming um, or learning skills from you, how would they go about getting in touch with you if ah. you are teaching? Well, I do. Uh, teaching is one of the things that um, it's one of my favorite things to do. It's one of the the skills that I am proudest of. I um, I had great teachers in my life. Um, mm -hmm. you know, um, oh, Maestro Faulkner and uh, you know Gordana and Santo and Isotoshi Shirobata, and then along the way, you know, I met people like Ron Liu. I wish I wish we'd had more opportunity to work together. It's not too late, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but yeah, and time. I try to pass that on. And I find um, teaching if you really want to learn something, teach it. Because, uh, you know, I tell people, if I know something and you want to learn it, I will find a way to impart the information. I won't just come at you. Very few people learn this way. Most of the time you have to find something that means something to them or something that's familiar and then build on that. Um, and I enjoy that challenge. It keeps me performance sharp, but I'm also constantly getting to rediscover new layers of things I already know 
um, as I'm teaching somebody else and helping them discover it. Uh, I often say to people, I've been teaching this 40 years. I have never taught it this way because you teach me how to teach you. Um, so I enjoy it very much. Uh, people come from all over the country, all over the world to train with us here. My school is DeLonge's Performance and Combat Arts, uh, and it's here at my ranch, uh, Rancho Andalo. Uh, we're about 45 minutes north of Universal Studios, uh, you know, north of Hollywood. And um, people come in, if they're from out of town, then they come in and they train intensively, you know, five days, seven days. For 10 years, we had the Australian Sun Academy come in and train for 11 days, which was, that was always fun. Um, but yeah, I, I prefer one-on-one -on -one or small groups because then I can really focus intensively on that person and find out how, how I can give them as much information as possible in whatever time we have together and then also give them things so they can continue training when we're apart. So. Mm. Oh. You know, you're... So by all means, please, please give people my contact info. Now that things are, we have our vaccines and things are opening up again a little bit, we've reopened the ranch and I'm teaching again. Great. We'll put that, that, uh, put that information out. I want to say uh, uh, your wife, Mary, yeah, uh, Dr. Mary, um, do you folks have any children or? Me. <laughs> well, you. You're the big one. I'm the child. Um, yeah, that's what I laugh and say. No, we, uh, we we have three horses. We have two dogs. We have me. I'm. Uh, she tells me that I'm. Uh, uh, how should we put it? Uh, <laughs> I'm labor intensive. Um, but no, we kind of the children are the people who come in and train with us. Uh, you know, we're we're in some ways a little bit like grandparents where we get, bring them in, we spoil them, we make everything a whole lot of fun and then we get to send them away. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have to live with us forever. Yeah, it's like an elephant. Nice to look at, nice to care for, but send them home. Mm, yeah, and boy, well, we have three horses. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, they, they, they want to eat on a regular basis and there are these things as, as they say in the quiet man, it's, it's good for the roses. Oh, that fertilizer. Yeah, well, well, um, Anthony, we've had fun interviewing you and talking to you. And, um, you know, I know we're going to be touching base soon because there's things that are uh, involving, uh, involving you. But um, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today. And um, anytime you need to contact me, just contact me and we'll do the same. So, um, do, you, do you have anything last words you'd like to say or words of inspiration? Um, well, I kind of crowded it in at the beginning. Um, never stop training uh, because it, uh, well, it's, 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 it's a joy that keeps on giving. Um, and, you know, there's uh, no matter what it is you're studying, you know, they, it's all onions. You know, the, uh, the, there's layer upon layer upon layer. And even, uh, you know, of course, I think the, uh, the quickest death is when you think you actually know everything because you don't. Uh, one lifetime is enough to learn everything about any art. But I find that um, the more arts I've studied, each informs the other and helps me understand a little deeper um, and gives me an appreciation for... Uh, uh, it almost doesn't matter what you study. Uh, I've noticed in my, you know, in, in my own, you know, studies and training and in, and in, um, investigations, uh, which is ongoing that every Asian weapon has a European counterpart and vice versa. Um, the, um, many of the Asian arts have been better at, um, chronicling them, if you will, or, you know, um, having a record. Um, but if you, you know, it's it, things that I learned in, uh, Filipino Kali, um, I have discovered also exist in German longsword. These are cultures that never, never met each other also exist in Japanese katana, which I didn't appreciate until, um, uh, one of the things that's most fun for me right now is, um, studying Shinkendo, which is Kaiso Toshishirobata's you know, Japanese swordsmanship. Uh, it's a very complete art. Um, he's really devoted his life to it. And I'm constantly appreciating, you know, how genius uh, it is. And, uh, you know, on, on so many.
but uh, eh, find something, you know, find, find something that interests you and stick around, you know, and uh, you'll be amazed at the places it will take you and how it will enrich your life. So. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining and, uh, you know, giving us this inspiration. There's a lot of things that I'm sure that people that have or li listening to this have learned a lot of things just from the man himself. Uh, Sonny, I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you have to say? Well, thank you, Sifu. That was a, a great interview. I mean, I've learned lots. Uh, one of the biggest takeaway I got was like uh, what Anthony was saying is that when you're learning something, make sure you learn it so that you can teach it so that this way you're learning it twice and it becomes part of you rather than just trying to remember. Because I know that when it comes down to trying to remember, <coughs> the tendency is to forget. But if you try to learn it and understand it and then teach it, it becomes part of you and who you are. So thank you very much for reminding me that, Anthony. Really appreciate that. That, that was the biggest takeaway and I, I will always take that to heart. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah. you. Thank and then you. also Sifu, uh, just wanted to remind everybody that you still have your book for sale, Legacy. So if anybody's interested, make sure you go to amazon.com for his book. Also, he's got his uh, DVDs for One Hub Kindle as well as his DTS videos that you can go to the martialarts.com. And then also make sure you look into Anthony's website for his uh, videos as well as his uh, teaching and everything. We'll actually have the website either on written here or there, just make sure you check it out because I, I would highly recommend uh, learning the whip because I know myself personally, I'm, I'm studying with Sifu Ron Lu uh, and my wife as well. And we just love the whip and I would love to see some of your stuff, sir, so that, you know, you can never learn enough. Uh, you can always better it. Come, uh, you know, come train with us. Uh, we'd, we'd, we'd love to have you if you can, uh, you know, bring, bring your wife. We'll keep her entertained. You know, she okay. can either supervise or participate. But yeah. I tell people life's not a spectator sport, so jump no. in. Well, she's not a spectator. She she loves weapons, and that's she's the one who loves weapons more than I do, to tell you the truth. So uh, she collects them and everything, and I will definitely – uh, put that on our list because our goal is to actually take the whole family to Disneyland within the next year or two. And then we'll definitely schedule that in if we can, for sure. I, I would love that, sir. Thank you very much. Do that. You know, you're about an hour away. You can base yourself here. Go to yep. Disney and have fun, but save some time either before or after and come see us. Oh, for sure. That's guaranteed now. Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you and uh, for joining us. And uh, nothing else, we'll give you folks a good aloha and God bless and stay safe. See you later, people. Bye-bye. No, don't cut it off, uh, uh, Sonny Pickle. We can chop it up. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. Are we Maybe. off? Yeah, we're off now. But, yeah, we're, uh, we're but, off. It's still recording, but it's okay. Yeah, no, uh, I just, uh, I want... That's it. I wanted to uh, be sure I had both of your um, contact information. Yes. Uh, um, so if you, you 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 have my email and everything now, Sonny. Yes. Uh, no, Sifu Al sent me your uh, telephone number. I'll send the information. Number. And what okay. I will do is I will message you my my information, sir. I want to get you both in my database. Okay. Uh, and um, you know, uh, Al, if uh, a couple. If you have to please, uh, see, uh, arrange a day to come see us or, you know, part of a day, have a meal, have a coffee, uh, you know, have a visit. You know, you can mm -hmm. see it. Uh, also, if I find myself back in Hawaii, I would be sure and call you and let you know and see if we can manage to get together because it would be very nice. Yeah, absolutely. But 
May uh, uh, June June July for sure for my when I go up there because of my daughter uh, I'll uh, make sure to make time uh, with you. Excellent. Yeah. So, what's your daughter's name? What's your daughter's name? Jaden. Jaden. J a y d n. Uh, yeah, uh, J A D Y N. Jaden. Yeah, she went. Uh, she's um actually graduating from uh, 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 film school, or she's more into um, uh, sound engineering. You know. Huh? Uh, so you know, she wants to be a DJ, um, and uh, work uh, work here in Hawaii. Uh, more, I don't know. She's got a lot of plans. I. Just, oh, I'm sure. Well, good. Um, what school? Where is she going to school? Um, I think, I, you know what, I think it's UCLA. I'm not sure. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry. I'm not there anymore, but, uh, yeah, no, they, they do have a very good department. So yeah. and congratulations, you know, uh, having your child graduate from college, that's a big deal. Yeah. Well, I've got, uh, well, Mark went to, um, mm -hmm. San Fernando Valley, uh, college or whatever, whatever there. And my daughter, my daughter, uh, Vanessa, also uh, went to uh, um, sound engineering and film school in Los Angeles, and my daughter Jaden. Matter of fact, all my children, you know, uh, so they they all doing something that way. Yeah, yeah. Give, anyway. Mark, give Mark my best when next you see him. Uh, please give him my regards and respects. Yeah, of course, yeah. Naturally. naturally. I I hope one day we get to work together again. Tell him what he needs a veteran actor who has some skills. <laughs> you know, he knows, keep me in he mind. Right, he knows it. Right, yeah. So um, hey, again, quick. Sorry, yeah, before, before I lose you. Uh, so um, I was talking to um, oh golly, uh, shoot his name. Your partner uh, for the um, Ultimate Weapons Hall of Fame. Um, oh, Ron. 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 Ron yes, Ron. Uh, I talked to Ron briefly. Uh, he wants me to send him an acceptance. Uh, you know, or you know, thank you for the induction and the honor. And how do I address you both? In other words, I I, I see Grand Master, you know, which you you know is a oh, you can do that. Okay, do that. Yeah. and that's true for both of you. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. Excellent. Uh, should I mention Ron Liu as well? I think Ron was the one who put my name in front of you, wasn't it? Yeah, he? of course. Why not? Okay, uh, sounds good. So I will get that off to you. And are we, um, uh, the, it's the 22nd, I believe of, uh, I have it written. Uh, February 19th. Everything is, February. Pre every, everything is, uh, pre-recorded. Yeah. And, um, it's all done. Are you, yeah. is it going to be, what I'd like to do is help drive some traffic to the uh, event, to the site. Okay. So, and it's just, I've been having a little trouble getting details <laughs> on, uh, right. what I can put up on my social media to tell people to tune in or to be more aware of, um, because I can't right. really find a website other than you know what Ron has up on his site. Yeah, I'll I'll send it. I'll send uh, the person that works in working and putting the program together um, is um, Sean. Uh, Sean, yeah. Okay. Uh, Hufflinger, and I'll give you this email address and then make the connections, and you just go ahead and forward it to him so he can uh, add it in. For you it. You mean the um, you know the Whatever thank you, you for do. inducting me that okay is is there going to be is there an evening is it being broadcast or is it up well, online or well but it, uh you know the thing is going to be uh uh put on on february 19th but you know at least four five days before everything should be done you know okay uh, just because you know we, we want to spend more time just putting in everything correct so we don't want to just shoot it live and then make all kinds of mistakes on that. So we do it yeah. before, yeah. So yeah, about three, four days, well, I say about five five days before it should be everything done. But I'll, I'll make the connections with you and Sean so you can go right. ahead and talk to him and then see what he wants. But what you're doing, putting it together as far as accepting speech and then driving traffic, man, by all means, just go ahead and do it. Okay. Uh, yeah. As soon as you can get me, Sean, I'll ask him because, um, you know, anything you, you more you need for me, but you, you had what you needed in terms of resumes and pictures and, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, video clips and things like that. So you, ha you have all that. You, you told me when I got you that a couple of weeks ago. So now mm -hmm. it's the acceptance speech. And then as a, if you no know, anything else he needs, and then also 
the um, concise way for me to get the word out to other people. Uh, a, as I'm very proud, you know, that you have invited me to become a part of that. Um, and then also, um, you know, I want other people to be aware of what it is that you're doing and see if we can, as we said, drive a little bit more uh, traffic to, to the event and then to succeeding things too. Right. Okay. I appreciate it. That was going to work. It's going to work out real well for all of us. Okay. Okay. So, all right. <laughs> all right. So, um, you still got, you still got the next, uh, uh, few hours of sunlight out there. So enjoy yourself. And, uh, I will. I will. And you as well. I'm admiring your artwork. This, this is one of the, I have Chuck Jones on the wall here. Who's a favorite cartoonist. This is my office. This is one of the few rooms in the house. I, I have swords, you know, uh, but you know, mo my wife, fortunately, I think that's one of the reasons I, uh, you know, started teaching her all this is she <laughs> lets me decorate with, you know, so we have, you know, it's kind of like the Wyatt Earp. I'm never more than two steps away from having a blade. On my hand. <laughs> Sorry, in hand. Yeah. But it, it's okay. aesthetically, it's quite pleasing, you know. Yes. We we, ha we have bladed weapons of all nations, so. <laughs> fun. Wow, it's pretty good. It was um, um, thank you very much. Um, you know, uh, Sifu, thank you so much, and uh, Sunny, thank you so much for your help too. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, so we'll be in touch. Um, uh, I'll 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 reach out to Sean when you've sent me the information, and then you and I will, mm -hmm. uh, Sonny, we'll exchange things so that uh, you yes, can sir. let me know. Let me yeah. know your travel plans. A visit to Rancho Mandala will. Uh, you'll oh, yeah. uh, you'll enjoy the investment. We got a couple things I think we can share with you. And oh yeah. Ron, right. Ron has his ideas on the whip, and I have mine. And we're. Yes. Uh, it's it's very great. Do you, do you know Tom Meadows? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I know. Well, Tom, um, Tom and I started about the same time. Uh, we were both training with um, and um, Tom, we were kind of very, we had different ideas on how to do this, but every time we would connect, we would look and examine what the other person was doing and then go away and incorporate it. And it's been a very, very nice growth. So and I'm uh, I'm hoping uh, I've reached out to Ron. I says I would love to get together. Well, hello, I'd love to get together. Hello. Aha! Um, <laughs> you must have heat in your house <laughs> if you live in Canada, and he's topless. Um, but that um, we're doing some more investigating together, and that's always when right. people come together with the knowledge that they have and. And I go, oh, oh, I hadn't thought of that. And, you know, and see where it leads. So I enjoy that. Right. right. All right. Okay, then. Uh, we'll Don't you get on with your day. Enjoy. You've got lots of sun. Uh, we have a beautiful day. Um, this is our time of year with our big weather where we'll get big winds or we'll get the rain. So it's been blowing wind for about five days. And, wow. um, and today it's absolutely calm. So. I'm hoping to get out and do a few, and you know, maybe some archery and some knife throwing, and get on the horses, and uh, you know, got to got to keep the skills up. Yeah, right. sure. right. <laughs> gentlemen, right, thank guys. you so much. All right, thank you, sir. All right, All right. Oh, wait, but I I will reach out and touch base with you closer to the date of the event uh, right. as well, Al, if I may. All right. Okay. All right. Have a nice day. Aloha. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. What's this fellow's name? Grayson. He's my youngest. Hey Grace, uh, so do you? Are you a uh, an Edgar Rice Burroughs fan? What? <laughs> I guess not. Uh, the name Grayson, uh, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of Edgar Rice Burroughs, who wrote who wrote the Mars series, and he also wrote the Tarzan series. Tarzan. Well, that's where it came from. His. Uh, See. <laughs> okay, Tarzan. Nice to meet that's you. why he goes short shirtless all the time. <laughs> yeah, like you don't. Well, I. Nice thing about these pants are optional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye bye. All right. Take bye -bye. care. Bye. 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 Bye, Grayson. Nice to meet you.